Okay, I decided today to do a video about the bias ratio. Um, this is a picture of a, a, a financial guy looking at the, telling someone he's got too high of a bias ratio. Um, bias ratio is uh, one of the ways, one of they said that they, they caught Bernie Madoff when he was doing his Ponzi scheme. And so I figured it'd be interesting to show you how to calculate it on Excel. Uh, so I got, uh, I found this paper and it had some data of a feeder fund, the, re the, the, the returns from a feeder fund the, the, that it was involved with the Madoff scheme, the Madoff hedge fund. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get this, this is from uh, this, uh, return data. From December 1990 to October 2008. So I'm going to copy this and let's go ahead and put it in Excel. And uh, I'll just paste it in here. I'll paste it as text. And so we have these. We have this data. And this is monthly returns in percent already. So see, some of these are very high monthly returns. Um, but I want to put these in a row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these cells. I'm going to go Control T. I'm going to make that into, and then I'm going to go OK to make that into ta a table. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into Data. And I'll go From Table. And I'll get, I'll get uh, this Power Query. And Power Query is kind of cool because I don't have to do any coding. So I can click here and scroll to the right and hold down Shift. So now I have all the months picked. And I didn't pick the year. And then I'm going to go here to Transform. And I'm going to unpivot the selected columns. You can see that now I put it all in a row. It has October or January 2008 and so on. So I'm just going to go back to this home tab. I'm going to go close and load. So now I have all this data. I have two months here that don't have data. So I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to right click and go delete. And I'm going to highlight all of these. So these are already in, per, in the decimal form of percent. Um, so, no, I think they're, I think they're percent, so I'm going to have to divide them by 100. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and highlight them. And, uh, let me go ahead and just call them RTN, RTNS for returns. And then what I'm going to do is, uh, I have a, I got this from Wikipedia. Let me paste it in here. So this is how to calculate the bias ratio. So um, I guess I don't have to divide this by 100 because it's just, we're just calculating the standard deviation. So if they divide it, if you divide them all by the same number, they're really the same thing. But basically the bias ratio is just a count of all the returns uh, that are, are positive starting, at, starting and including zero all the way up to one standard deviation, including that standard deviation. That's in the numerator. And then the denominator is one plus the count of all the returns that uh, are starting at zero, not including zero, because they included zero up here. So not including zero all the way to a negative standard, one one negative standard deviation, including that standard deviation. So we basically have to count these. So uh, first thing I do want to do is I want to calculate the standard deviation of those returns. So I'm going to go equal standard standard deviation. I'm going to use a sample standard deviation. And I named those when I highlighted it. I named them returns. So I'm going to go RT, RN, what I call RT, NS, I think I called it. So I want the standard deviation of those returns. So that's the standard deviation of all those. And then, so what I want to do is I want to count, uh, I want to count what's in the numerator. So I'll just count this, I'll say count numerator. So I want to count all the numerators in those return. In, I want to count all those returns that are above zero between between zero and one standard deviation, and including those. 
Okay, so I say, so I'm going to use a formula in Excel that's really nice. It's called equals countius. I want to count the returns, and I'm going to start at zero. I want everything that's greater or equal to zero. So I'm going to go uh, greater than or equal to zero. And I also want to count at the same time, I want the returns that are less than or equal to, less than or equal to, and I want them to be less than or equal to whatever this is, whatever the standard deviation is. And it goes ahead and counts. So there's 88 returns in there that are between zero and one standard deviation. So now we can count the numerator or count to the denominator. I think that's how you spell denominator. And for there I want to go equals count ifs and returns. And now I want less than zero. I remember I did greater than or equal to zero on the other one, so now it's just going to be less than zero. And then I want the returns that are uh, greater than or equal to a negative standard deviation. So I want the ones between a negative one standard deviation and zero, not including zero. And so I have 16 returns that are that are in that in that area. So then, so then also. Also, now I could check to see if, if I'm doing this correctly. Um, I could, I, I could, I could count the ones above this. So I could go count above, and that'd be equal to count if. And then I would say the returns. Um, are greater than. that right so that's all the ones above the numerator above above uh, one standard deviation and go count below and that would be equal count if uh, or the returns oops I got the cap locks on returns are uh, less than less than a negative standard deviation. Oop, did I do something wrong? Let me check. Or less than. Oh, maybe there aren't any below. Uh, are, are any aren't any low ones? So if we sum all of those, let me put the formulas in here. No way you see the formulas I'm going. Of course, this sum will include. Okay, so there should be 215 returns. I also can count them. E equals count. And see if that's correct. Make sure I did it correctly. Yeah, and there's 215. So that means I included them all. So there are no returns below one standard, one below a negative, below one standard deviation on the left hand side. And, and there's only 16 negative turns overall. Okay. Um, so anyway, let's, so now this BIOS ratio is really, really all we need were these two things, right? Those are what we need in order to do the BIOS ratio. So now we can do the BIOS ratio. This other stuff was just to check to see if I was doing it right, right? So the BIOS ratio is going to be equal to, well, the numerator is right here, divided by parentheses one plus the denominator which is right here. Um, so we get a BIOS ratio of uh, 5.17. We, we don't need to take it out that many places. We'll just say 5.18. So that's the BIOS ratio. So BIOS ratio is actually pretty easy, right? You just have to do these three lines of code and then do this after you calculate the return. 
Um, now, according to Wikipedia, it should be monthly returns, and I don't know if that's really necessary. But I, this is monthly, so it actually ended up working out that way. Um, so how do we know if that's fraud now? Well, um, if you go to... If you go to um, risk data, riskdata.com, the same place that I got those uh, that cartoon from. If you go there, they say uh, depending on the hedge fund, this is this is what the BIOS ratio should be. So. Um, Depending on the liquidity of the hedge fund, uh, the BIOS ratio should be in a certain range, right? So if I, an equity, like it says here, equities are like around one, something that like one and two. What is this? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So an equity, the BIOS ratio should be somewhere around one, something like that. So this would ask, actually be a BIOS ratio for for a hedge funds that has fairly low liquidity investments, right? The only ones here would be distressed, multi-strategy, fixed income. So those, and that was not the strategy that uh, that uh, Bernie Madoff used. He used uh, he, his hedge fund claimed that it was, uh, I think, some type of strike. Let me see if I have that. It was. Uh, said in this paper that they used a, I used Fairfield Century, that was the returns from Fairfield Century, the feeder fund, and they used, uh, according to this paper, they used uh, split strike, split strike conversion strategy, um, which uh, was fairly liquid, right? So that's, that, so anyway, that supposedly they used, they calculated this BIOS ratio that I just showed you, and, uh, yeah, typically it's going to be one for an equity and uh, you can have higher biases bias ratios but that's usually going to if the hedge fund has highly illiquid investments in it um, so basically what it's saying is most of the returns are positive returns right because you know in this case it's very suspicious right you got 16 negative you had none below below one standard deviation right and you had 88 positive that's a little bit suspicious right so the bias ratio is actually pretty easy to calculate. Uh, here's another graph that I, I looked at that I got from uh, riskdata.com. Uh, it basically shows the liquidity and where the ratio should be depending on the liquidity of the underlying securities in the fund. Um, so anyway, uh, that's all I really wanted to show you, how to calculate the bias ratio. I think that's kind of interesting. So you can do it on anything. If you do this, like on the S and P 500, it would be one point something. You know, it wouldn't. It'd be you. You know, they tend to be positive, but not all of them are going to be positive like that. And plus, it was very smooth. Another problem was this is very smooth. There are a lot of reasons that this fund was suspicious that he got caught. But anyway, hopefully that was interesting. And that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching.